Welcome to Office 2010 Video Project 39. Hey, we're still talking Excel, and here in this video we want to talk about the VLOOKUP function. Here's a little data set. We're only going to use this sales column, so I'm going to scroll way over here. In our last video, we saw how to do the IF. I'm going to click back over here. So for example, in this cell we said had a logical test, and then we put one of two things into a cell. But the thing is, is you don't always have just two things. Sometimes you have more than two things. That's where the VLOOKUP comes in. Here's our situation. We need to look at all of these sales numbers and categorize them. Subpar, OK, good, great, exceptional. Now, I am going to show you this. You do not need to look at this IF part because it's ridiculous. But I want to contrast that you could use the IF, but there's a much, much easier solution, the VLOOKUP. If you were going to do an IF, two ifs in a row, you'd say if, and you'd have to do a bunch of ifs, because what? Look, there's all these categories, so you'd have to do something like this. If this is greater than or equal to this, then please give me a, the word exceptional, comma. As soon as you get to the value of false, and you have more than one thing, you have to put another if, so you'd go if. And then you'd say, this value greater than or equal to this, then you want this. And you'd have to keep doing that till you get to the top of this category. Now, I already did this down here. You'd never do it this way. But you could. There it is. It's a bunch of ifs. There's one, two, three, four ifs. Now, the rule for multiple ifs is if there's five things, you need four ifs. Totally ridiculous. There's the VLOOKUP. When you have now, when you have more than two items, you have to consider using VLOOKUP instead of IF. Now, here's how the VLOOKUP function works. Let's do it in our head. We have to um, imagine we have, we're doing this on a piece of paper, right? Let's say 154. We'd have to look through these categories. OK. Uh -huh. This number fits between 100 and 500. So we take that OK and we put it right here. Right? And then we take this, we put it into our head, we look through here, we say, well, it fits between, oh, this one's greater than 1,000, right? So we take exceptional. Right? We take this one. Now, we're going to talk about what the VLOOKUP really does. The VLOOKUP doesn't have a category like this. I put this there for us to, while we're learning to understand what these mean. The VLOOKUP, it's going to be a function in that cell that takes this, it looks at it, and it's going to look up the number in the first column. When it finds a match, it then knows to go over, get the word, and bring it back to the cell. The way you organize. Uh, VLOOKUP table is you put the smallest number at the top and get bigger, bigger, bigger. Every time you have a 500, it means, or well, let's take this one. Any anytime you have a value, you go down here, and when you bump into a bigger value, you know then to stop here. Now, technically, that means we don't have to use this greater than or equal to the sales are greater than or equal to 100 but less than a 500. You see what we do is we put this in our head, we go racing through the first column and we hit the first value bigger than the this value right here, the one we have in our head. We jump back, we take the OK and we put it over here. Let's do that one more time. Take the value put it in our brain, we remember it, we go racing down here, we don't see any number bigger so we take exceptional, and we come back here. One last one. We, the VLOOKUP is going to take this. We're, that's going to be called the lookup value. We're going to then tell the VLOOKUP where the table is, because it's got to know. The VLOOKUP will automatically always go to the first column and start looking for the first bigger value. We have 152. It bumps into that. It jumps back. We're going to tell it that the thing we want to put back in the cell is always in the second column. The first column is what VLOOKUP looks up. The second column, or there can be more columns, is the item that we want to throw back in the cell. So in this case, we hit the 500, we come back here, we get the OK, and then we come back over here. 
That is how VLOOKUP works. It is unbelievably common because in this example, we're looking up categories, but we could be looking up tax rates or product prices. We'll do both of those examples in a second. All right, so let's see this. This is exciting. OK, we're going to have to type an equal sign and then a V and then look up. Now notice VL, there's only one function, so I usually hit VL tab. Now what is the V for? The V is because we're looking up vertically. There's actually a horizontal lookup too, which is HLOOKUP. But lookup is what we're doing. It's a common everyday task that people do in the business world. The V is for vertical, because this is orientated vertical. Now the screen tips are pretty handy here. If you get confused and forget like that the table has to be uh, sorted from smallest to biggest, you can click our f of x and look at the arguments. But by the way, th this right here in 2007 and later, this is a hot link. You can click this and it opens up help. And it tells you all about the VLOOKUP. Here's a little VLOOKUP table. Or you can click here and then read the arguments and read these down here. I'm gonna click Escape. I shouldn't have done that. Equals VL. We're going to use the screen tips here. Now, VLOOKUP. That's the number that it puts in its head and remembers before it looks in the table. So I'm going to click there. Comma. The table array. Well, you got to tell VLOOKUP where the table of values are. So you highlight the table. First column, second column. And you got to be sure and hit the F4 key. Now, this is a lookup table. This is never going <coughs> to we're never going to have this vary at all, so we always just lock everything, no matter what. Comma, the column index. This is asking you, well, if I'm going to look up in the first column, which column do you want to take the value from and to throw it back in the cell? For us, it's the second column. The sales category is in the second column. So we type a 2. Finally, comma. We have approximate match and exact match. Approximate match just means that there are some gaps. Notice we go from 500 to 750. So there's lots of values in between. Later, our next example, we'll have an exact match where we actually look up a product name, which is a word. So by default, this function always does approximate match. So we do not need it when we're doing an approximate match, meaning we have numbers like tax tables, commission tables, all sorts of examples. Again, I always think of it like there's gaps. But by default, it does that, so I'm going to leave it out. That's it. That amazing formula will look up and give us the same things as that big, huge if. I'm going to double click and send it down. You can see they're exactly the same. By the way, this huge data set here, this was a big data set. I hid some rows so it fit on the screen. And when I copied it down, it actually copied through all the hidden rows too. To unhide, you highlight the two row headers and right click, unhide. And you can see, wow, look at that. I mean, that's a lot of work that if you had to do it by hand, it'd be crazy. I'm going to hide those. I select the 105. I scroll all the way up, which was the, now right before this one right here, I'm going to, I'm holding shift. Remember our trick to highlight two bookends and everything in between is highlighted. So I'm going to click. Now I'm going to right click hide. It's still there. It's just hidden. All right, so that is VLOOKUP. Let's look at two other examples. Again, when you're learning the approximate match, I like to make categories like this so I understand how it works. But bumping into the first bigger one and jumping back, that's a pretty good way to remember it. All right, let's look at these next two great examples. Very common. We need to uh, type any product in this cell and have the price pop up. For example, people create invoices in Excel using this method. Now, before we do the VLOOKUP, I want to limit what goes into this cell. I only want product 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Nothing else. If I type something in that's not one of these, I want it to give me a message. No problem. Under the data, data validation, we're about to do one of the cooler tricks in Excel, by the way. You select data validation. Now, there's a bunch of things we can do with this. We don't want any value. We would like 
a list. It's a bunch of other cool things, but this is the most common one, list. And there it is. You just highlight. This is data validation list, and then highlight the range. And that's it. From now on, there will be a drop down arrow. See, drop down arrow. <clears throat> and you can just select from this list. I'm going to click OK. Is that not cool? Not only that, but if I change this to Bellin These are names of boomerangs. The data validation drop-down list absolutely updates. All right, so we're going to say uh, a Bellin, which costs nine, or a, let's do a quad. Quads don't cost 15; they cost like 20, 30 dollars. All right, so now our goal is we need the VLOOKUP function. Notice we wouldn't want to do an if. If equals to quad, then that. Otherwise, if equal to boom one, then that. Otherwise, if equal to Carlota, then that. Forget it. We're using VLOOKUP. The lookup value, the name of the product, comma, the lookup table. First column is where you look up, second column, or you can do many more columns with VLOOKUP too, like in tax tables. We're only going to use a two column table. That's going to be our, the, the number that gets returned to the cell. There's our table. We told VLOOKUP where the table was. We don't need to lock it because we're not copying. Comma, column one, column two, that has the thing we want to return to the cell, so a two. And then comma. True for approximate? This is not approximate. We don't have numbers. These are exact matches. We want it to find exactly quad. Now you could um, do true or false. I mean, sorry, we want false. So you put a false there. But you know what? You never need to put a false. You just put a 0. 1 for true, 0 for false. Remember, in computer's logic, true and false, yes, no, 1 and 0. So I'm going to put a 0. And that's it. Now let's format it with currency, Control Shift 4. And then I'm going to test it. Oh, that is so cool. Boom, 1 is 20 uh, quad. Now, what if we make a mistake? Like this quad is really not $15. It's like 32 bucks. Just like that, it updates. All right, uh, our last. VLOOKUP example. This is going to be this similar to the approximate lookup we did over on this sheet because we have values and the lookup column, the first column, uh, has gaps, has uh, in between each number. And that's the way a tax works, right? You have this could be a percentage or, in our case, an amount. But we want to be able to type any amount in here. And have us tell, have the formula tell us what the tax is. All right, so you ready? Equals V lookup. Lookup value, that's the thing you put into your brain. Comma, you gotta tell V lookup where the table is. Remember, the first column is always the column that must be sorted in ascending order, and it is the lookup column. The second one is the thing that you wanna throw back into the cell. Comma, column index, one, two. Comma and oh, I'm doing approximate match. I know that's the default. You could put one if you want. You could put true, but you don't have to. By default, it's programmed if you leave it out. Notice the square. Notice the square brackets. We've mentioned that a few times in this class. Anytime you see the square brackets, it means uh, there's a default for it, and you can leave it out if you know what the default is. I'm gonna. Highlight both of these and add currency with Control Shift 4. And is that right? Bumps into the first bigger one and comes back over here and gets that 60. All right, let's try uh, 15,000. That's bigger than anything there, right? Sure enough, it goes through. It doesn't find any number bigger, so it takes the last one. By the way, if you put something smaller than this, like minus 5, it says not available because there is nothing below that. 2555. Five, five. All right, uh, V up there. There's some homework here. One, two, three uh, columns for uh, with instructions up here and an answer right here. Our last video for Excel will be a short little video coming up. Uh, we'll see you next video.